Okay, we're gonna switch gears to our uh, transmission components here. All right, you guys ready to talk about how not to break something? Okay, this is, this is an important part of why I've asked you guys to wait for me for the uh, installation of this. And we're gonna focus on this, this guy right here. We're gonna focus on this, uh, on this boss right here. We've got uh, a support plate that's gonna go around here and hold this, uh, hold this in place. So these, are the, these two screws are not what I'm worried about right now, I'm worried about this one. And what it is, is it's our spring for our arm that's going to hold our selected gear position. Do you guys remember this? The back of the star here? Yeah. So each one of these in-depth channels is what? And what's the little, what I call a half moon? Neutral. That's your neutral, right? So we need to hold tension on this, and to be able to do that, we have to have a pretty heavy-duty spring. And uh, so this assembly, that center dowel, dowel pin, which is already manufactured onto this bolt, is not always. Sometimes that dowel is loose and has to be inserted on this assembly. Are you with me? That's tip number one. This bolt for this shift this, this arm that is going to hold your selected gear. Some people call it a detent. Um, another term for it is a gear locator. A detent or a gear locator. And, and uh, there are plenty of other models out here that have one other piece to this assembly and that is a washer on top of this. Okay, we do not, but you guys might see that on yours. Are you with me? Okay, here's what I want you to realize is that when this is when this is properly assembled on here, it will fully rotate on here because we are not torquing, we are not torquing this against something. We are what we're actually torquing is we're torquing this dowel pin, the edge of this dowel pin, we are torquing that to the engine case. This one, I'm sorry. And what happens is this arm needs to float. So here's a really cool test for you to find out whether you have all the pieces or not. Number one, use a microfish, right? Yeah. Now before I thread this in, I don't know if you guys could see this in the video, but I have, before I thread it in, I have just over a half inch of thread. How common have we talked about that? Okay, now watch this. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave the spring off. I'm gonna leave the part that makes it a little difficult to install off. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this on. When you tighten this, watch what happens here. This will drop down off that dowel. Okay, so I'm gonna install it wrong. And when you're doing this against spring pressure, you'll see what I mean. So did you see how it locked up? Okay, we got a problem there. It won't function that way. What I'm gonna need to do is I need to get this up on the, the dowel so that it's free. Now to decide whether I should have had a washer in there, like I said, use the microfish, but watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that down. That's around six to nine foot pounds because it's that six by one common fastener that we're using all the time. Does that make sense? Check this out with that tight. Do you see how free that moves? Because what that's gonna allow us to do is that's gonna allow us to shift through our transmission and it's gonna work perfectly free. It has to be able to go back and forth. I cannot stress this enough this is a common part that people put on, they accidentally lock it up, you're able to put the whole clutch on, put the cover on, fill it with oil, start the bike, you'll put it in gear, and it will, it will lock in that gear. It is not going to want to shift into anything else. You're going to try to shift, but that detent arm is now holding it in that gear. What's it take to fix it? Back Everything back apart. So what my, what my goal today is, guys, is that you fully understand the function of this so that you eliminate that and do it right the first time. Make sense? Yep. Now really in its application, wouldn't you agree it's really a pretty simple design? Yeah. Okay, what do you bet I like to put on this bolt? Loctite. Loctite. I sure do. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to see today what your manuals tell you to do. I like to put Loctite on it because I've been in the habit of doing that, but uh, that doesn't necessarily make it right. Okay, so here's what makes it hard is when the shift drum's in place, Remember me talking about shift kits and how what it is is just the spring is a lot thicker? Yeah, yeah that's a good little review there. So I'm going to just kind of set it in here loose. Yep. 
And I've got to, you see I'm just kind of keep wiggling things? Because if it gets tight on me, if it binds on me, what do I know? It's not right. It's not right, so I'm feeling pretty good here. And see how that's kind of snapping now too? So I'd have Loctite on here, get my torque wrench out, torque that in place, and that is how you properly install that arm. So another thing you could do, if you have the one with the washer, pinch it in your hands and you can kind of spiral it around and see that it's completely free. Another uh, thing to think about on these, what breaks is this right here. And uh, this is a, a rivet design, meaning that they push this metal through and then they fold its edge over so that this, this ball basically can't come off. Because uh, guys, you gotta think about this too, does this spin on any RPM? No. None at all, because all we're doing is first gear, second gear, and then it holds third gear. So that means that this bearing also does not have any RPM to it. Once again, good time for review. What do you have to do to these threads, internal and external? You know, make them dry. Clean, okay, I heard it. Clean, dry, and then you apply your Loctite. Guys, this one here for sure is a Loctiteable fastener. This is very common uh, that you're gonna apply Loctite to this. Make sense? Before I put this on, I also have to realize that I have a detent in the back of the shift cam, and this is really common in, in most every metric power sports transmission, okay? So I'll go ahead and just move this out of the way, see if I can hold this in place myself. I've got it fully engaged. I do not want to put the tension on this as I install this fastener, why not? Uh, kind of side loads it, you know what I mean? It's gonna take that pin there just for purposes here, I'm gonna pull this. Is I'm gonna get this in neutral. I need the transmission to be level. It doesn't have to be level front to rear, just more uh, side to side here. So I'm gonna take this here. Did you hear it snap? Did you hear it and see it? Okay. So I need to figure out where that half moon position is real quick. It looks like I might be in top gear. So I'm gonna just keep rotating around. You hear that clicking every time? Yeah. Okay, why do I keep having to rotate the shafts? Because it's designed to only engage while it's going forward. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the out, sh out shaft, the counter shaft, and do you see how I can rotate these now? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm not in gear. I'll go ahead and just select a gear. Okay, and now I'm, I'm physically in gear. Hear that clicking? Okay, so I'm gonna go back. I wanna work from neutral. We're on the half, we're just on half of a step. We're not deep in a groove. Yeah, you guys can see that, can't you? Yeah. We're not deep inside there. So what this does is it allows me to shift my whole transmission. Here's the whole key. Listen to me on this. The whole key is if you try to do this from here, the weight of the gears at shift forks, gravity will sideload them and you might go, oh, something's wrong, my transmission's binding. The only way you could do this on the bench is with it really uh, lined up straight up and down so that you don't have the gears waiting one direction or another. Are you with me on that? Hey guys, uh, we're taking a look at kind of cleaning up some older videos and revisiting uh, certain skill sets and uh, literally trying to shorten up the length of those videos. So this one here made me think about uh, one of my Facebook buddies and uh, YouTube fans here, uh, Mad Machinist, uh, sent a job he was working on where this was installed improperly, and I thought, oh, I'll take a look at this. So here's the picture uh, Mad Machinist sent us. You can see the two detents missed the spot. And here's the pin that we're talking about from the previous picture that should have been located properly. Here in this video, you can obviously see the, the big key thing we're saying is it's, of course you have to install it right, but it's it's about stopping and checking your work. And so here at, uh, you know, in our courses this year, we had this kind of saying that's gone around called a 140 moment. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a pausable moment. It means that you stop, check what you did, verify it worked before you move on. The failure with this is a lot of people continue to get so deep into it installed and the only fix sometimes is to take it all the way back apart and split the cases if something internal was the issue. So um, check your work, take a time uh, to just uh, breathe and uh, make sure there's no extra parts and all those other things we talk about with every mechanic should know and uh, keep wrenching.